What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, Paul, I'm glad you enjoyed the Ice Nine and the uh, the story on Instagram today. Uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, knives that you, well, mostly stuff that you have not seen me unbox yet on the channel. I have so many knives here right now. So many people responding to the community post for knives for review and uh i've just i've got so much fun stuff out here including a sneak peek at the new titanium spider co shaman oh god i uh i filmed the whole unboxing of the scales uh i filmed the assembly uh put some music to it and my initial reaction to it um and uh it's just magnificent but What's left to change? I have a new pocket clip coming in. I specifically asked them not to mill the hole in the titanium scales. Got a better clip coming. I did add the flytanium backspacer, which is much better than the backspacer on the standard shaman. And uh, these will be sent off most likely to, excuse me, Fanatic Edge for texturing. Um, and then um, all that's left is for uh, Spider Coat to come out with a better, you know, tumbled blade steel, like S45VN. But yeah, it's pretty much perfect. Paul Monko TV, I sent you a DM about something you might want to check out. All right, I will, man. Hey, thanks for the uh, donation. This is laid back. I know I put a pumpkin in a thumbnail. It really has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't think of anything, you know, festive to do. So a lot of the content this weekend is kind of like that. It's like, it's kind of Halloween-y, but not really. Um, but yeah, so what does the Shaman weigh now? It weighs 6.6 6 ounces. Heavy, chunky boy. Tristan Murphy, thanks for the donation. What's up, man? Very nice of you. Um, let's see here. What, uh, we went <laughs> clickbait. We want a pumpkin on the screen. Or we spam dislikes. <laughs> All my pumpkins are on the front porch. My kids painted their pumpkins, and so we put them all over there. We do this thing where we go to the pumpkin patch and pick the absolute weirdest. I'm sure other people do this. We intentionally pick the weirdest, ugliest pumpkin. So our front porch has, like, tall yellow pumpkins and, like, little tiny white pumpkins and just a bunch of stupid, warty stuff. And it's fun, you know, and the kids paint them, and they just look ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I have Swag's um, uh, knife out here. The uh, Mylea. Is that how you say that? It's pretty cool. I mean, honestly, it's a pretty good design. And it's got the new AR RPM 9 steel on it. And check this out. Here's something I like. Listen to the click on this detent. Oh, that's nice. Um, I, I get into little... I, get, I like clicky detents. Click. Very nice. Very solid little piece there. Uh, boy, I don't know where you can buy it, honestly. I think she had it on her Instagram. Um, I I messaged her about it. I said, hey, I'm going to show this on my YouTube channel, but she hasn't said anything back to me yet. I honestly don't know where you can buy that. Um, let's see here. Hey, I'm glad you guys showed up. I'm sorry I had to switch this to Friday. We have so much planned for Halloween. There's just no way I could get a live stream out, you know, so I know there's not going to be nearly as many people in here, but that's okay. Um, this is going to be regular question and answer, just kind of laid back knife chat. Chris Emmett, thanks for the donation. That was nice, buddy. Very, very much appreciated. Um, let's see here. My Malaya came with a loose thumb stud that I couldn't tighten. Tried and tried. That's too bad. I wonder if I can tighten this one. This one's mine, sent courtesy of Artisan Cutlery. Hang on. Let me give it a shot here real quick. Should I plug my tools? Pick up my tools right down in the description. They're very <laughs> recommendable. What's the pivot here? Boss 619. Hello from Nashville. Hey, what's up, Boss 619? Thanks for making the live stream. Um, all right, let's give this a shot. Hmm. I'm going to crank on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can totally mess with this. No problem. Yeah, my, this one turns. The action's still good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe you got some super tight Loctite on that, that thing, but this one's just fine. 
Uh, oh, good. You bought the Wii set? Yeah, it really is. That's the cheapest, most functional, just handy Wii set. Nathan Strange, is that a Civivi Cleaver? Yes, it is. Thanks for the donation. This is the new Civivi Mastodon. Holy crap! <laughs> Man, talk about a good pocket knife to carry on Halloween. You want to scare the shit out of everybody. Golly, this is, uh, this is Jason Voorhees, um, uh, folding knife for sure. God dang, this is cool. Uh, very, very awesome for sure. Let's see, John, uh, oh, it's Josh Hickel, what's up, MCO Paul as well. Are you liking those Thai shaman scales? I love them, man. Flytanium did a beautiful job. And check this out. I have this thing perfect, perfectly centered, perfect action. I have it, it's actually, I the space between the camera and the table, I can't show you, but it's so smooth and solid. These scales actually are better they actually solved a weird little issue with the uh, with the action that I had with the standard scales. These scales are better than my standard scales. They, the, the knife actually centered up and the action's better and, and the, the pivot is tighter than with my standard scales. So I, well, I was like, holy crap, man, that's awesome. I'm so excited about those. They are so worth it. They're expensive, guys. 120 bucks, worth it. Uh, price on the, yeah, price on the scam, uh, shaman, scamming shales. Shaman skills, what is wrong with me? 120 bucks? Get them all you can. I don't make any money if you buy them. I can't give you an affiliate link. I'm, you know, I'm legitimately, not that I, not that I don't actually recommend things that are in my affiliate links. No, I'm just saying, if you're wondering the legitimacy of my recommendation, yeah, I can't make any money on those. I just really like them. Tristan Murphy, thank you so much for the donation. If they fixed it, you should be able to FF it now? LMAO. What is the FF it? I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, the weight now is 6.6 .6 ounces. Boss 619. Let's stop messing around. We want to see you carve a pumpkin with a scalpel. That's what I should have done. I should have laid out a uh, freaking. Uh, that's a good idea. I should have laid out a big like trash bag or something and carved a pumpkin with. Um, I should have carved a pumpkin with one of my hinders. I've been funny. Ryan Smock, what's the second knife from the left? Right here. This is the new J. Kobach Sumo with about a thousand different ways to deploy it. It is a button lock and it is ridiculously smooth. You have a teeny tiny little low profile flipper tab that works beautifully back here. You have the slots, which you can use to reverse flick the knife. And then you have these perfectly formed external stops right here, just right there. Oh, I got my finger in the way back here. Back here. Oh, this thing is a fidgeter's dream. Oh, God. It's expensive. That's a $550 knife, but it's a mid-tech, so keep that in mind. Wonderful knife. That freaking video got 75,000 views, and I got people from all over, all different corners of the internet telling me, you idiot, you could have bought a, Glo a Glock for that. That's That was the reason for the meme. I fr I mean, like, I'm, I'm welcoming to people outside the knife world, but I hate it when people just pop in to inform everybody that, you know, like, like we all didn't know that knives get expensive and that it's crazy. <laughs> we, we know. We're, we're, we are willing, willingly accepting this craziness, right? Uh, Kiefer, thanks for the donation. Um, only the scalpel, this is the way. Yeah, all right, you're right. Tristan Murphy, sorry, front flipper. Oh, yeah, no, I cannot front, fl front flip that one. I have tried and tried and tried. I'd like to think that I have strong hands. I cannot front flip that. I, I, I cannot front flip that knife. I, I, seriously, I absolutely can't. I, no. I, I, that, that knife makes me feel like maybe I don't have strong hands. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you want to see the dire wear? Yeah, this is my first time ever handering, handering, handling a dire wear. This is an S90. God dang, the action is way better than I thought, considering this is a, essentially, like, if a killer whale and a folding knife had a baby, um, this is like, I don't, it feels like if Medford and ZT collaborated. And watch this. Oh, absolutely fall shut. Absolutely 
fall shot. Yeah, if Nicki Minaj was a knife, this would be it. <laughs> Look at the grind on this thing. God, damn. It, you know what's crazy? It actually gets freaking stupid thin down here. Not so much up here, but still pretty impressive. But down here, it's re so thin. It's probably XM24 thick on the spine. Absolutely. Pocket clip sucks. I'm going to say that right now. I, I mean, I, I get they went with style for the knife, but I hate it. <laughs> I hate the clip. The rest of the knife is super cool. Slice it, Icy. You smell like poo. Not feeling creative tonight. That's okay. You're probably right. Uh, I just went to a little kid's Halloween party, so there's a 40% chance that's on me somewhere. We definitely had to change a couple of diapers. Uh, Paul Monko TV. Wow. Oh, gross. Gross, Paul Mongo TV. I hate that music video. And you know what? The edited one is worse than the unedited one. It's so gross. It's uh, That is the most disgusting music video I've ever seen. My wife and her sister made me watch that. And I sat there just absolutely frozen in disgust through the entire thing. I didn't move. I was angry. I was sad. I was, I was confused, and uh, I'm a little, a little part of me died during that music video for sure. Uh, let's see here, the one knife. Uh, where can you get that CJRB? I don't know where you guys can get the CJRB. You're gonna have to message um, Sharp and Pointy Swags on Instagram. I have no idea. Um, I would tell you, but I would. I'm guessing it's the CJRB website, but I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, don't watch the music video. Don't, don't watch it. It's really gross. I would rather watch A Clockwork Orange over and over and over again than watch that music video. <laughs> yeah, Paul. <laughs> That's all right. Your donation fixes it. Thing. I'm suddenly, I'm magically healed, right? <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's see. Uh, should bring out that pretty red OTF. Oh, yeah, Zell, you've got your... Oh, Zell, I need to get this back to you, dude. God dang. Zell still got his, uh, his Truid on Hellhound here. Red and bronze. Look at that. Nice. Nice EDC size. I actually like the red and bronze. It's kind of like Iron Man Switchblade, right? Pretty sweet. Leave that guy up here. Uh, let's see here. How do you carry the fixed blade? Um, you, well, it, you'd have to clip it to your belt. So you pull that back, pull this back, and you just clip it to a strap like that. Pretty, I mean, super solid. I don't, I'm not gonna say I'm super knowledgeable about Kydex sheaths, but of the maybe 20 or so that I've handled, that one's definitely solid. That one's definitely up there in the top three for sure. The brown, you guys want to see the brown cortex? Yeah, I'd love to tell you guys that this is an inexpensive knife, but it is not. The top flipper, or, oh, beautifully smooth, or, whoops, sorry, camera angle, or front flipper, oh, beautiful. I don't know if you guys can, if it's picking up in the camera, There's it's blue lace carbon fiber. And this up here, this bolster's textured. Beautiful, 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 beautiful knife. Very smooth, absolutely frictionless action. There's a lot of really teeny tiny details in this knife, really interesting stuff that I've never seen in a knife before. Little things, right? Not necessarily incredibly important things when it comes to a folding knife, but little tiny things that I find really interesting. You know, that, that guy's an aerospace engineer apparently, and it makes sense. Dylan West, thanks for the donation. Would you go for a copper or brass backspacer? For an S110V PM2, can't decide. Honestly, I think copper ages better. You got here's here's what it comes down to. Which one's gonna look better after it patinas? Because they're both gonna patina. I'm gonna say copper. Brass just looks like every old thing in my grandma's house. That's what it looks like to me. Like her old candlesticks that she still has. <laughs> it's, that's what it looks like to me. It just looks like an old candlestick. So um let's see here how's the detent on the kaiser sheepdog it's perfect this is the best version of the sheepdog that's ever been i mean except for the custom one but 
Yeah, this is the best size. Um, I like the BD1 and steel. Love the tumbling. The micarta just looks better on this knife. Honestly, I, I just love this. This is a great... I would EDC this, honestly. I have no problem with that. The little one's too little. The big one's too big. It's kind of a Goldilocks situation there. That one's perfect. Great price on it, too. Can you see the fixed blade? Sure. This is the brand new Hinderer Emmett. All of these right now are being made by Rick Hinderer himself. And you can get them on the Hinderer website. I wish I could give you guys a link. Uh, as of right now, I can't. This one's in OD Green Micarta and 20 CV. They make them in G10 and different colors of Micarta. They even have a vintage one that's in 01. Fitting in the, uh, in the um, sheath is perfect. No wiggle, anything like that. Beautiful, beautiful fixed blade. About 275 bucks, but that is 100% made in-house in the USA. Tristan Murphy, wow, that was an extremely generous donation. Thank you. Go check out Clark Handmade Knives on Instagram. Better action than Gareth Bull and super reasonable prices. Base price of his front flipper is only 550 for a full custom, and Mitch is super nice. The full dress is under 800 right now. That's awesome. Please link me uh, so I don't forget. Send me a, a link on uh, Instagram or on Patreon or on um, Discord, wherever you're at, and, so that I can remember to take a look. God dang, there's almost 200 people in here. I only expect, I mean, seriously, I say this all the time. I only expect about 100 people to show up tonight. Thank you. But wait a minute. 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 190 people in here, but there are only 56 likes. What the f I'm just kidding. But seriously, like the live stream because my ego is fragile and I've only had a couple of uh, Gatorades. So, yeah, I need the likes. I need the likes, please. <laughs> Get it up over 100. 89. Get it up over 100, you, you lazy goons. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Two thoughts on a Medford knife, and would you recommend one or something different for the price range? Well, I haven't showed any Medfords on my channel for a while, and I probably won't. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm going to sit back and kind of let Medford be exactly who he is, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what changes for him in the future. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, can I see the Dirac again, please? Yes, absolutely. Excuse me. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking, Troda. No, the Dirac is sold to a patron, actually. That one is, uh, sold. It's, um, uh, even knives that I really, really like, guys, I move them generally quick unless there's something extra special. Um, the Dirac is probably my favorite, excuse me, OTF design, um, in existence. But... Mm, the itch calls. The itch wants what it wants, and I had an itch, so I had to sell something that uh, was readily available because that's how I purchase knives. Um, if I want something, I have to sell something. I, I generally don't use channel funds to do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jack and Aaron, would you be worried about the CPM M4 blade corroding with EDC use? And how to treat the blade I use in with sort of my... Uh, I, I think the sword oil is pretty good. Losing oil for maintenance. So it depends on where you live. Let me give you a, a great example of why I'm not super afraid of M4, especially coated. Here is a uh, Maximate Para 3 that I've had for a year, and I EDC this thing a lot. I live in Kansas, right? This is what I use to protect my blades. It is wonderful slicey will tell you lots of people in here will tell you edci formula is effing magic for your knives i probably spray this blade down once a month and i use it for whatever i feel like m4 is not corrosion resistant by a long shot it's probably in the same ballpark as m4 and this is not a coated blade and i've got just a tiny little bit of a patina forming on that thing so if you live in the midwest or somewhere with a similar climate right then uh, probably nothing to worry about. If you live near the coast, I would say don't use M4. J Gemini M390 just hit 100 on my EDC YouTube channel. So excited. Can I see the Seiko? Hey, that's cool. Um, is that your YouTube channel? 
Jade Gemini M390? Because if it is, I can tell people to go sub to it. Congratulations. 100 is... I remember how hard it was to hit 100 subs. It took over three months for me. So, yeah, that's cool. Can I see the Seiko? Yeah, for sure. There she is in all her glory. Just chugging along. Uh, I love this watch and I wear it every single day. In fact, a lot of times I sleep with it. <laughs> I like being able to... The loom stays on like most of the night so I can always see it. Love this thing. Um, let's see here. Okay, if I had $100 for an OTF, what would you suggest me to buy? I'd Honestly, I'd buy the Lightning for 35 bucks. I don't think there's anything that competes for the with the Lightning up until... Uh, you get into maybe some of, there's some oddball Chinese brands that are selling OTFs in the mid $100 range. But honestly, the Lightning OTF is probably the best sub $100 um, OTF. To, for me, it, here's my, here, here's where I look, here's how I look at it. I'm going to buy a Lightning if I want an OTF beater. If I want something better, I'm going straight to Microtech. I'm going from Lightning to Ultratech. There's, for me, there's nothing in between. Uh, I've heard AKCs have a lot of issues. I've heard of a lot of premature misfire issues with AKCs. Um, I mean, you know, maybe you'll get one that's nice. I've just heard too many bad things about them. But honestly, I've never handled one. So, you know, 100 bucks. It depends on, you know, if, I mean, if it's, if it's money that you've been saving for a while, I wouldn't spend it on an AKC. If you can throw 100 bucks away and not, not flinch, then yeah, give it a shot, you know, but if you want something reliable under a hundred bucks, I'd go with the Lightning. I had the exact pair of three you've been in, you see, sold it a week later. Why? Why though? Uh, my AKC is great, but my brother's doesn't fire and lock out at all. It's probably hit or miss. Paul Monko TV, thanks for the donation. Did you get one of the Microtechs, uh, the Microtech live show knives? You got my first Ultratech, only 150 bucks. No, that's awesome. Wow, that's a great price for an Ultratech. No, uh, my next ult, my next uh, uh, Microtech will be the Scarab 2. I'll probably buy it for myself, but I'd really like to handle one first. What direware model is that? This is the S90. Shorter guy, about seven and three quarter inches overall. About the same size as a Medford Praetorian Genesis, but it has flipping action that feels... It's like ZT flipping action on steroids. That's what it feels like. Why does the liner lock go to the left side after a bit of use? The liner lock on what? Uh, that's I mean, like, not all line. In fact, the liner lock on a good knife won't go all the way to the other side. Usually, it's because the knife is not good quality. Um, what was the fixed blade you gave away? For your badass 30k giveaway again that was the off-grid alpha dog and i said that they were readily available and i also said they were like 85 bucks and i was wrong about both of those things they've actually gone up to about 120 now which still isn't a bad price considering what you're getting um but uh i don't know that they're available honestly you can check them out i think they're amazon only at the moment can you see the hoback osf yes you can this is another thick boy yeah, this is a beast. And honestly, I mean, it's very thick behind the edge. But I think it, I mean, it's it was obviously intentional. Jay Kobach is clearly able to create much more slicey edge geometry when he wants to. Sorry, there's a left-handed flip on a low profile, low profile uh, flipper tap. This is very thin, the Sumo, right? The OSF is monstrously thick. Big old thick, nasty thing, but really, really cool. This is a cool knife. God, it feels the... Just feels powerful. Very, very satisfying knife. Absolutely. Thoughts on the bailout? I love mine, and it practically came free drop. Came free drop blade from the factory. Also, I have a 940 Axis and bailout. Any advice on the next knife to get? The bailout makes the most sense out of any, the bug out. The whole bug out bailout thing. This version makes the most sense of all of them. Aluminum. Love it. Textured aluminum, love it. The Tanto blade, pretty cool. The finish on it, super cool. M4, definitely. This is the best version, hands down. I'm going to review this and the 20 CV bug out, but I like this one the best. Stasa 23, hello. Stasa 23, so go subscribe to Stasa. He's awesome. Thanks for the donation, buddy. Nick Kaz, thanks for the donation. Very nice of you. 
Any chance on a giveaway on any of these? No, because I don't own any of them except for these two. And no, I love this guy and this guy. But I promise I'll do more giveaways in the future. Absolutely. In fact, there's a super cool knife coming up after having a conversation with Jay Kobach <coughs> that he's sending me that maybe will end up as a giveaway knife. I don't know. You'll just have to wait. Um, let's see here. It depends on how much I like it, honestly. John Walker, thanks so, so much for the donation. You dressing up tomorrow? I don't think so. I might do, I might pull a gym and just write book on my face or something stupid like that. Um, I, I, you know, it's more about the kids now. Uh, my son has this awesome, like, transformer costume where it actually, like, turns into a car. And then my daughter's the little mermaid, and I just kind of want to, like, be present for that and not worry about my costume. Um, but I don't know, you know, we're, we're not throwing a party this year. My wife and I usually throw a Halloween party and we just decided we didn't want to do that. So we're, we're just not going to, um, Hey, thanks for donation. CZ void wrecked 69. Hey, I have a Gerber jukebox. I see seen used daily. I'm curious on anything you have on the jukebox. Personally, it's fun and very handy. I have not reviewed that knife. I actually don't know what it looks like. If somebody could send me a, if you have me on Instagram, send me a, a message with a picture and if not, somebody else send me a message with a picture so I can remember to take a look at it. I'll check that out. Um, let's see here. You could dress up as Nick Shabazz. <laughs> Who could tell you you're wrong? You know what I'd do is just wear one of those full body white like suits, like this, like the sort of the spandex suit that goes over your face. And then I'd just wear a suit and a top hat and have a cane. <laughs> That's perfect, right? That's exactly what he looks like in my mind. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hang on. We don't know that. We don't. For all we know, Nick could be jacked out of his mind. He could be six foot eight and jacked like a some kind of, you know, thunder dragon beast lord. Um, let's see here. What are your thoughts on the pair of three? The good and the bad. Pair of three has only one flaw. The position of the stock pocket clip. If you go in with the Para 3 Lightweight, it only has one flaw, and that it's in it, it's that it's an FRN, and I hate FRN because it's like holding onto a Lay's potato chip. Uh, but truthfully, both are great. You just need, if you're gonna go with the Para 3, go with an MXG deep carry clip, and here, what you have here is essentially a perfect EDC knife with this clip right here. Absolutely perfect. This is one of my most carried knives. I love it. Please give me a Kalashnikov. No, they're not very expensive. You can buy one. Sorry. Um, what do you guys use to sharpen your XM18s? I use the uh, KME. It's expensive, but it's worth it. That was the best freaking 300 bucks I spent. I think you can get them for a little bit less now. Um, absolutely, the KME is wonderful. The best knives under 50 and 100? Um, uh there's a lot of them, dude. I've got a, I've got multiple playlists on that, but I mean, most people are going to tell you, um, Kershaw bare knuckle. Uh, I would, uh, oh, between 15 and a hundred. I like the blur it's assisted, right? But Kershaw bare knuckle is probably going to get more. Um, <laughs> that was kind of a mean response to the clash. I comment. I'm sorry. No, people are, <laughs> yeah, the elementum's, the elementum's great. Yeah, a lot of people are giving you a lot of good responses. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes people ask the same question over and over again until they get a firm answer. Uh, the feldspar is great. I mean, there's a, honestly, there's a lot of knives that I'd choose under 50 bucks before I spent almost 100 bucks on a knife. But yeah, for sure. I hope they do the Feldspar in Micarta with a better pocket clip and with the new AR RPM 9 steel. Talk about the greatest budget knife that could possibly exist. Uh, a Crewwear Pair 3, yeah, they've done that before, I think. Great one. Um, yeah, Asher knives, they are very compelling. The new Asher Spyro is awesome. Um, I'm going to hold off on the review on that for a little bit. I want to wait until he gets more in stock so people aren't like, I want this. I can't buy it. You know, people get mad at me when I do that. So I'm going to wait until he gives me the, the green light and says I've got more because he sent me one and I legitimately like it. Tristan Murphy, thanks again for the donation. Also, have you seen the S35 VN QSP Penguin? No, I did not know that they did one. How much are they asking for that? I'm going to guess 80 bucks. 
That would be uh, that'd be cool. What do you think of custom knives? Not production at all, purely one of a kind. I think that some custom makers can make truly masterful works of art, like Andre, uh, Andre Thorburn. The knife that I unboxed today was a full custom, absolute effing masterpiece. Sometimes we have custom makers who I'm not going to name, but over the last 10 years, we've got some custom makers who have been eh, less than impressive, right? And commanding pretty impressive prices. So you got to be careful about that. Um, sometimes flaws, natural flaws come through that are associated with handwork, which makes a truly excellent, a truly perfect custom knife all that much more special because it highlights, you know, exactly how masterful the work is. Uh, a truly master crafted custom knife is worth every penny. Whatever it is that they're charging for prestige, right, or for, you know, this the excess, right? Um, if it's truly perfect and it is your cup of tea, then it's worth whatever you want to pay for it. Honestly, that's my opinion on custom knives. But be careful. Do your research, for God's sakes. To quote Nick Shabazz, do your research on custom makers before you fork over money as a down payment, right? Or, you, you know, they... Some, we've had some issues where people have, you know, had to wait for years and have not gotten their money back. So just be careful. Pippin M7 is the new, thanks for the donation, is the new Blade HQ Benchmade bug out in 20 CV worth it? 212 bucks. Is there an equivalent to the bug out that is a flipper? Thanks, Metal MP. I'm assuming he meant Metal Complex. Um, the 20 CV bug out for 212 bucks is a little overpriced. Honestly, maximum, it should be exactly the same thing as the Benchmade bug out in 20 CV. I don't know why they want 212 bucks for that thing. So if it was 160, 170 bucks, I might be like, yeah, go for it, you know? But hey, the whole gritter is M390 for, and you know, it's G10 and M390. It's a nearly perfect knife for freaking 160. So why is the bug out 212? As far as a flipper equivalent, I don't know. The chat has a suggestion. You guys are welcome to answer. The thing about the bug out is, is it's kind of a unique design, and I think the Benchmade knows that, you know? Very popular. Uh, let's see here. $59.99 for the S35 Q, uh, VN QSP Penguin. Yeah, hey, now that S45 VN is a thing, and we're starting to see it from Hinder... And, by the way, yes, I do have an XM18 and S45 VN coming. I know people are going to ask me. Um, and I bought it. It's mine. Uh, but... Uh, now that S45VN is the thing, expect to see S35VN drop across the board. But don't get caught up in the whole S45VN is better than S35VN thing. There is a marginal difference, a little up, a little down. It's basically in the same territory, right? It just has more corrosion resistance, and it's got a little bit better edge retention, but it's not the same toughness as S35VN. These are marginal differences, but you're going to see S35VN go for less now especially in budget knives. We're gonna start seeing S35 VN in a lot of sub $100 knives now. The Hinder is a fixed blade. Yes, this is the Hinder Emmet. If you, I'll show it again. I, people really liked this one. I think Nick, or not Nick, Rick uh, knocked it out of the park with the Hinder Emmet. This is beautiful. And I'm sure that we'll see different blade shapes on the Emmet. Uh, contoured XM18 profile. Oh, melty goodness in the hand. Very, very nice click very satisfying let's see what are your thoughts on the Civivi elementum it's definitely one of the best budget knives that's ever existed i consider anything under 75 bucks a budget knife i know people get mad at me they're like it's under 50 it's under 75 for me Civivi elementum and s35vn might be one of the best budget knives that's and actually that one's a little more but the Civivi elementum just you know just standard is one of the best budget knives ever it's also one of the most recommendable knives for anybody um yes he does quack fam yes he does uh contoured titanium scales would just melt my butter absolutely um can you scout carry the emmet i'm not a fixed blade guy so i don't know what that means but if you could explain it to me i'll try and answer i've just been carrying it around my house in sweatpants <laughs> like some kind of noob um let's see here uh People are upset that S35VN is softer than S30V because apparently edge retention is the beginning and end of steel. Yeah, edge retention is not the end all be all. You're, yeah, Wicked is correct there. I understand what he's saying. S35VN target heat treat is supposed to be right around where S30V is. 
the initial you know reports of S35VN, and this was a long time ago, a long time ago, was that it was supposed to match S30V in edge retention and be easier to machine and sharpen, which is better for the knife makers and better for the end user, right? And then have similar corrosion resistance and better toughness. All of those things were true, except for the edge retention, but it was a marginal difference, right? You might get, you know, somewhere between four and 8% better edge retention with optimally heat treated S30V over S35VN. I've still found that I prefer S35VN because it's way less chippy at optimal heat treat in the right geometry, and it is definitely easier to sharpen, definitely. Turn the buckle so it draws out instead of up. Uh, oh, like rotate it? I don't know. I don't know if you can do that. I don't, I don't think you can, I don't think you can. I don't think this rotates. Hang on, oh, let, me, let me mess with it for a sec. Does it rotate? No. Oh, no, wait, it does. Yeah, because you can take these screws out. You just undo those, and then I, you just rotate it. Yeah, so, okay, so you can carry it, you know, whatever you called that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm fully knife guy. I don't know. <laughs> I just know tip up and tip down, you know, and, and throw, you know, and, and not throw. <laughs> Why did I say throw? <laughs> don't throw your folding knives. <laughs> oh, man. 224, hello, 227 people. How come there's only 129 likes and two dislikes? There should be more of both. Mm. Hey, let's plug the um, membership thing. So for all of you wondering, my Knights of the Round, uh, those little helmets beside uh, people's names in the chat, for all of you wondering, what are those? Those are my Knights of the Round. Those are people who have joined my membership program. What do you get if you join? You gain access to the badging system, which uh, will put a little helmet beside your name and it'll change colors depending on how long you've been a member. Blue for a new member, green after a month, purple after three months, red after six months, and gold after a year. Uh, you also gain access to the exclusive Excalibur emojis, which some of my knights are showing off right now. There's a lot of different sorts from popular culture, popular video games, right? I'm sure you guys will recognize a lot of them. These are usable in live chat, but the helmets will be a part of your name, whether you're commenting on a video or you're here in live chat, so everybody will know. Dominic Romero 14, welcome to the Knights of the Round. All hail Dominic Romero, Knights, raise your swords. That's what we do. And then people also put pickle emojis in there because I accidentally started that, and I don't know, I don't understand it, but it's, a, it's there. Um, and I also have a Benchmade Griptilian with a pickle laser engraved on it now. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. You guys can see kind of what we're doing there. More emojis come as, as more members um, decide to sign up. Uh, YouTube grants me more slots, so I'm always coming up with new swords and stuff. Um, M, thanks for the donation. Can we see the Glock? <laughs> uh, I would show you if I owned one, but I don't because I spend all my money on knives like an idiot. Ugh. I can't. Let me make this abundantly clear to everybody. I have hate it when somebody who's not like i understand people who aren't knife people right you haven't gotten into it it's okay you don't know but people who like bust through my wall like the freaking kool-aid guy boo did you know you could buy a glock for 500 dollars? you idiot i hate it when people say that it's like <laughs> okay so bet what you think is happening right now is that i was just strolling down the street like an like some big stupid lumberjack and was just like, oh, I found a knife and they want $500 for it. I guess I'll just give them my money without knowing it. No! People don't think. But the reason I sound so salty is because that freaking, this Hoback video got so many views. And there were so many people just come, you know, they just got done watching Jake Paul or what other dumb shit they were watching before they came to my channel. And then they were like, oh my gosh, does this guy know that it's just a knife and it just cuts? And I was like... Oh, there's nothing I can do. I've lost control of the comment section. <laughs> oh, man. Wait. R.I.P. Jake Paul. He's not dead, is he? Jeez, if he is, I feel bad. I don't know. I just... No, I just said... I don't know which one is the one that's popular. Um, Tristan Murphy... Uh, did you know you can buy a for 500? 
Uh, Thomas Pichney, I've got that tucked away, very safe under, there's a bunch of uh, priority mailboxes and everything is very sorted and has little tags on it because I've prioritized, and now I have a system like a review system for order and I don't want to pull it out of its little slot right now, otherwise I would show, I'll tell you what, next live stream, remind me again and I'll make sure that it's out for the live stream. Oh good, he's not dead. <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh no, did he die in a forest? Uh, eh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe that was too dark. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. There's no collection. He is the collection. It's a really green bug out. It's a, uh, it's a bailout. It's an M4 bailout with aluminum scales, which I much prefer to the both G10 and the freaking um grivery scales <clears throat> i'm sorry yeah i'm done with the nick shabazz impressions i shouldn't have done that um i just watched so much like his mannerisms come out i do that at home with my wife while i'm cooking i'll crack jokes and i'll be like and she'll be like can you stop being nick shabazz and just cook me my effing eggs you know or what like it, it just comes out naturally and it, it's just i don't know i can't control it is that Shaman and Excalibur now? The Shaman is officially the greatest folding knife that I've ever... Seriously, I'm, I'm announcing this. The Shaman with the titanium scales is officially my favorite folding knife that has ever existed. It needs a couple of upgrades. The pocket clip is coming, and I'm going to send these off. I think I've decided to do both sides of the scales textured, but even in this form, it's just too perfect, right? If I had the blade tumbled in S45VN, because that's just what I want, the better clip already, the backspace has already been upgraded, and the texturing on the titanium scales. Basically, the only thing that it's missing from my list for Excalibur is external stops, but I honestly don't care at this point. It's, it's really that great. You have to really love a heavy knife, right? Uh, but I like a heavy knife, so I'm good with it. Uh, Bolstered Blades, you ever going to review my stuff? What stuff are you trying to get me to review? Send me a... If you sent me an email and I didn't respond, it's probably because it got buried. I'm sorry. Um, but send me a, um, an email or a, a message on Instagram and I'll try and get back with you. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, let's see here. Oh, wait. Is Bolstered's... I know who you are. Yeah, you're... Wait. I know who you are now. I'm sorry. Yeah, your stuff is in queue. It's just been in queue for a long time. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Wicked, I'm very tempted to do my Shabazz voice and, and read that, but I'm not going to. I got away with one of those. Nick did did hear my impression on that live stream and he messaged me and said he was laughing really hard. But I I honestly don't I don't like to do it because I think some people think that I'm imitating. He knows that I'm not like mocking him, like like trying to make fun of him. He he got a kick out of it, right? But I think some people would get that wrong and then the way that information spreads and the way that people spread things like people who don't know spread things around the internet. I don't want I don't want people to I don't want a reputation for making fun of him because that's that's absolutely not. I very much respect Nick. He's been very helpful with the channel and has uh, helped me out and, and, and guided me in a lot of ways. So, yeah, no. Um, let's see here. Hey, that fellow there heading out. Later, folks. Stay safe. Thank you very much for stopping in the live stream and have a wonderful night. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I should digress. <laughs> uh, who dislikes but they wear gloves to the gym? <laughs> that was my favorite comment of the night. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Listen, it's okay to wear gloves to the gym. I get it. The knurling on the bars hurts. <laughs> oh, my face is leaking. That was really funny. Um, it's okay if you, I mean, it's your first, if, you, if you're just venturing into the gym and you don't have calluses, it's okay to wear gloves to get used to things. But the reason he's saying that is because it's, you, the idea is to get your hands used to the bars. <laughs> Uh, it just makes me laugh every because whenever I'm in the gym and I see somebody wearing gloves, it's, it's not just the gloves. There's a whole outfit that goes with it, and it just said the the it, the outfit says I just ordered all of this stuff from Bodybuilding.com, and this is my first day here. 
Um, but uh, that that also sounds like elitist and gatekeeping, right? But if you have, it's okay to wear gloves at the gym. You know, I can understand. If your hands aren't callous, it's going to hurt. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. But you should wear gloves while you work, especially with sharp tools. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nick Shabazz seems like it's cool with you and Brian, but I might be well. Yeah, we, we actually talk quite a bit. Um, uh, yeah, he's, you know, very easy to talk to and we chat about YouTube stuff. All of us are pretty busy with our own channels, but we are very friendly with each other. None of us have ever, you know, had any friction or anything like that. I mean, we, I think we all realize we all, we all love knives. We all have widely varying tastes. Uh, Slicey and I share the same taste in a lot of stuff, especially hinders, but we do have varying tastes and we all, we, we both respect each other's varying tastes. And that's the same way with Nick. A lot of these guys all just know like, Hey, we all like knives. It's okay to like different stuff. So yeah. Um, let's see. Why did I get into watches? Nick made me a good deal on this. He really did. And I wanted a watch. I got a little bit uh, hydrated on my discord one night and started saying stuff like, I want a watch, blah, you know, and uh, Nick chimed in and was like, I can send you a watch, you know, and he did, and I loved it, and I, I've never had an automatic watch before, and this, it was, it's great, and honestly, here's my favorite part, my wrist swells throughout the day, this adjustable clasp is awesome, I love that I can click it to exactly where I want it throughout the day, um, and uh, like, it, if I have eaten a lot of salt and drank a lot of water, my wrist swell. So it's nice to be able to adjust that when I when I need to. Hang on, guys, one sec. Un momento, por favor. I don't speak Spanish. I'm sorry. I know that and donde está el biblioteca, which is from a movie, and that's the only reason that I know it. All right, let's see. <clears throat> oh nope, are we out? Hang on. Hang on. There it is. So opening up another Gatorade. Um, drinking too much. No, I, like, and that actually I wasn't mocking anybody either. That's literally all the Spanish that I know. And sometimes I sing it when I need to go do something. I, I sing, uh, oh, I forgot it already. Um, un momento, por favor. I just, that's something that I do. Um, but no, I wasn't, just so everybody knows, no, I wasn't mocking anybody. Um, I, you guys said, nobody's saying that. I just wanted to make sure. Cause I realized like, oh God, that sounded like I was mocking people. I just don't know any, I just don't know any Spanish. Um, too many electrolytes makes you buy watches. <laughs> yes, it does. Those damn electrolytes always making me buy <laughs> watches. <laughs> uh, any advice on finding your voice as a knife reviewer yeah actually i'll tell you what if you go back and watch my old reviews my really old reviews and i've kept them up my old shitty just cringy reviews right um but there it's important that they're there i want people to see that i want a reference point i was very awkward i didn't know what to say um, and I was, I toned down my true personality so much because I wasn't comfortable. And I, I thought YouTube wants to hear a certain type of voice. They want a certain type of character, right? That's actually not true. Um, certain people want a certain voice and a certain type of character, but it, you're not trying to attract everybody. You're trying to, you know, engage with people who understand you. So the best thing you can do, and this sounds like, you know, your everybody's mom's advice to them, literally be yourself exactly like you would be with your close buddies. I act exactly like I do with my close friends. Like if we're hanging out on a Saturday night, that is exactly how I act in my reviews. It's exactly how I engage with you guys here on the live stream. That's how you should do that. Be yourself, don't I mean like, don't think of it as talking to potentially thousands of people on YouTube. Just think of it as you're excited about something and you're telling a buddy about it, right? And then all of a sudden the flow starts to get there and like your, your mind starts to work a little harder, a little faster, right? And you're, you're saying things that you actually think, it's organic, it's real, right? Don't worry about necessarily whether or not it is the most popular opinion, right? And 
right or wrong like i mean there's certain facts you can get right or wrong you definitely want to do your research but the opinionated stuff yeah it's your opinion so just let it fly you know let it burn hot people will appreciate you for that and they'll realize you're being honest so there's a whole chat happening right here and i've just been ignoring it. uh slicey says like in any form of performance art your on screen slash on stage persona eventually meets in the middle. Then it kind then it kind of becomes effortless. I would imagine Slicey would know more about that than anybody, considering he is both on YouTube and a legitimate stand-up comedian. So he has to do the scarier version of that, which is actually stand up in front of people whose faces he has to look into and then crack jokes. And then sit there as they respond. The nice thing about YouTube is that you don't necessarily have an audience while you're recording, right? And it's not actual human interaction. So a lot of that is mitigated, right? Standing up on stage and doing comedy and having a moment by moment reaction to everything you do and say, my worst nightmare. Hats off to Slicey and anybody else who does that because I could absolutely never do it. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I'm reading. You guys are having your own conversations. So here we can fidget with our favorite knives at home. I get a different response in a bar. That's very true. <laughs> Was your old channel called Metal Complex 87? I heard you call yourself that in one of your videos from two years ago. Yeah, and the reason that I did is because my email, somebody had already taken Metal Complex at gmail.com. And so I just made it 87 and then I called myself Metal Complex 87 and then I changed the channel name because I realized why do why do I have a number in there, you know? So yeah, it actually used to be and anybody remember the old logo? The oldest logo was actually a big green M with a sword through it. Um, actually the same basic sword emoji that you knights have in your Excalibur uh, armory. Um, and then I realized it looked way too much like the Marfion custom dagger logo with the M. And so, <laughs> so I changed it to Metal Complex with the sword through it. And I actually still have that on the banner of my YouTube channel. And then my buddy, Endure88, who does all the channel artwork exclusively for me, he, cha he made this standard logo just MC in the sword. And that's the one that's stuck. And actually, that's why people call me MC now. Um... Slicey, it's true that a lot of idiots who did one open mic call themselves comedians at Mr. McKenzie. I wish there was an entrance exam. <laughs> Slicey, as far as I know, has been doing this for a very long time. It's an, it, an actual, like, I don't know what you call it, registered, like a legitimate, that's the word I'm going to use, is an actual, like somebody you would go pay to see, uh, actual, an actual performer. Ugh. Jacob Santini, got to go, bye. Okay, bye. Um, Will Farrell and Ryan Gosling as the knife guys is pretty funny, that is. <laughs> ah, Slicey, we should reenact that. <laughs> ah, man, that'd be funny. Um, let's see. Uh, very long time read. He's a uh, very old board certified yeah okay there you go thoughts on the crkt deviations i don't know i've never seen it send me another send me somebody send me a picture of that on instagram as well and i'll take a look please um you qualify for screen actors guild insurance i didn't know those that things so there's that i don't have it because i have the va i there's just a lot of stuff that i don't know anything about um, is the Shaman better than the Manix 2? I enjoy the Shaman a lot more than the Manix 2. I trust the... Com well, I'm not going to say I trust the compression lock more than the uh, cage lock. I like the compression lock more than the cage lock. Um, I also like the contouring of the Shaman scales better, and I like the ergonomics better. But the Manix 2 is still definitely one of Spyderco's best knives. Absolutely. I EDC'd a, a Manix 2 for probably a year and a half before the channel got started. Um, thoughts on the new Civivi slip joint? It's okay. Uh, it's a damn good price at 28 bucks, right? I mean, you're not going to go wrong with it. I just, I don't like slip joints as much as locking knives. I actually think they're a little more dangerous. Most of the cuts on my hands, you guys can't see them. I have a lot of little tiny scars on my hands. Um, 
Where's a good one? There's one right there. Can you see it? I filleted my finger right there. Most of these scars are actually from uh, slip joints, from trying to do things with slip joints. Because I carried a slip joint when I worked at um, the dealership, and I was always cutting myself. I, it was a multi-tool slip joint, and I would use the screwdriver to unscrew the, the plates, like the dealer tags from the back of um, loaner vehicles and test drive vehicles. And I was always cutting myself right before a test drive. So, yeah, they kind of... But, yeah, if you like slip joints, 28 bucks for that thing, yeah, it's, it's well made for sure. Thoughts on Omega Springs? I honestly have never had one fail. But I do consider them a weak point versus other modern lock designs. Um, there are simply more dependable locks, right? Some people claim their Omega Springs, Omega Springs have lasted them 10 to 15 years, and I believe that. Other people have said they broke on the first day, and I also believe that. Fortunately, Benchmade has a really good warranty. So as long as you're not doing anything stupid with your knife, they'll replace them. I don't work for Benchmade. Talk with them about that. Um, big props to this entire knife community that has helped out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the knife community is one of the best online communities that I have ever seen. And I, I mean, you know, we've all seen a lot of different online communities and most of them are dickheads. Uh, sorry. You know, that's the case. Go to the gaming community. They suck. Uh, but there's a lot of them. And the knife community, for the most part, there's a lot of camaraderie here. And I see way more good than bad. And I just, yeah, the knife community is freaking awesome. It's absolutely amazing. And it's because this our world is expanding, but it's nowhere near as big yet. And it's nice that the people who are here are generally very knowledgeable and generally very intelligent people. And that's why most people get along, right? Um, and because a lot of us, you know, go around to the same channels and a lot of the, the channel creators know each other. So it kind of feels like everybody knows each other, you know, and that's, that's nice. It's nice and wholesome. When will I get my own Blade HQ exclusive? <laughs> uh, they know me because I have an affiliate program with them and that's about it. Uh, I don't know that they, they've never said anything about it and I, I wouldn't. I, I, I would be too terrified to submit a design. So uh, honestly, if I ever design a knife, it's a ways off. Um, it's a cool idea though. Um, Slice says, I think the knife community is the most respectful to one another because we're all armed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might be true. Uh, the D4V2, sure, yeah. Um, here's a titanium one right here. So I can get those lights going. One, two, three, and one, two, three. There we go. And let's hold it down. One, two, hold. And let's get it to rotate. There we go. So there's the um, D4 V2 in titanium with the luminescent switch. And then I've got it set to rotating LEDs. This guy's something around 4,800 lumens. It's got a magnetic tail cap, which almost stuck to the clamp there. Um, this is one of my favorite flashlights. Beautiful. These are about 110 bucks, something like that. Really cool. Love the frag texturing, the copper up here, which has just started to patina. And the, um, the, uh, the titanium one has the illuminated button, which is nice. And it'll run like this with the uh, rotating LEDs for days before the battery goes down. So pretty cool. A lot of different modes. You have to be willing to <laughs> Figure out the Onderil user interface, which is very complicated, but you can figure it out. Um, let's see here. Londinium Armory. Hello. Welcome to the live stream, buddy. Nice to see another familiar face in here or familiar um, chat icon. 4,300 lumens. There we go. Um, very powerful. It'll definitely light stuff on fire. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, your knife might be like when Homer Simpson designed a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, exactly. What do we add here, 58? All right, it's pickle time. You guys can do all your pickle stuff. It's that time. I'll, I'll go until um, 10.05, so you guys have time to, you know, be pickle nights and whatever that means. What does it mean? I don't know. You just If you don't know what that means, you're going to have to follow along with the chat. It's not really a... There, there are no... There's no specific rule and no definition it's just something that we do and we all know about it and once you figure it out then you're a part of it uh, 
Hey, the Knife Whisperer, what's going on? I think the Knife Whisperer definitely has a YouTube channel, so you guys should check him out. It doesn't take longer than two, you know, two seconds to go find his YouTube channel and subscribe to it. So yeah, do that. Support support these smaller channels who are trying to get started and get growing because it's hard and it's rough and it's brutal, right? YouTube does not make it easy for growth. They are against you. When you're when you're a smaller channel, they do not care. You have to fight and scrap to get to get going. So yeah, help them out. Subscribe to them. Uh, the Becker BK9, no, but I'd love to own one. The Becker Kabar, is that? Oh no, I'm thinking of BK2. No, I don't know what a BK9 is. Sorry. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, that's that's a good attitude, left-handed knife reviews, and check out his channel as well. He said it's hard, but I love it. That's the only reason to do it. If you love it, don't do it just for growth or just for money. Uh, that's a bad idea. Do it because you love it. If you love it, it'll it'll work. It might take a while. For anybody who hasn't heard my story, it took me three months to get to a hundred subscribers. And it took me an additional 10 months to get to 1,000 subscribers. That was a very difficult because I was still uploading. At that time, I think I was still uploading five to six times a week. It was brutal. But, I mean, in terms of getting to the, that threshold. But I did it because I liked it. It was fun. And I, I, liked, um, I liked communicating with the knife community. Even though a lot of people told me I was an idiot and that I should quit. <laughs> I'm still an idiot, but I'm glad that I didn't quit. Definitely. I think Slicey will say something of the same. He'll say I'm also an idiot. Slicey <laughs> uh, will agree that I'm an idiot. Um, let's see here. What's the name of that fourth knife? One, two, three, four. This is the um, Kaiser Sheepdog Vanguard series in Micarta. Sub $100 knife that is excellent. Definitely pick this up. Yeah, by the way, a lot of the knives you're seeing out on the table, shameless plug, you can find them in my affiliate links right down there. I don't know if you guys know about my description. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard, but I do have affiliate links down there that you guys can click on and buy the stuff that you like, and at the same time, it does benefit my channel. But that's okay if you don't want to. Uh... Oh, hey, thank you so much. He says, you've, you've got an awesome work ethic and that shows in your videos. Thank you very much. I, I really do love doing this. I, I literally wake up every day very excited to talk about knives and to film stuff. And I love interacting with people. Even people who leave negative comments, I'm still... I mean, I don't like negative comments, but, you know, it's like it gives me something to engage with and be passionate about and go, no, I don't agree with you, you goof. Yeah, sad to see the OSF price. Yeah, they're expensive. That's a mid-tech. That's a partially handmade knife. All USA made, so it's going to be pricey. Talk you into a hinderer? I've got a whole playlist that'll talk you into a hinderer, buddy. Hinderer knives are my favorite knives, like my favorite series of knives all the way around. As of right now, my favorite single knife in existence may be the Thai Shaman. But as far as my favorite series of knives, favorite designer, favorite, you know, like knife design that has like the different elements and all that. Hinderer is great because they have a million different blade shapes, a million different finishes, right? Uh, they're American made in-house. Um, you can, anything you can think up, Hinderer probably makes a version of it. And if you don't like it after you get it, right? Or if you change your mind after you, you know, get the colors, you can change it. The hardware, the scales, right? Um, all that stuff can be changed. Uh, it's just wonderful. And they do an excellent job. They're very consistent. Their parts always fit. Excellent flipping action. Fidget factors there. Got a couple of flaws, you know, like the flipper tab is a little bit awkward, but absolutely up to par with modern standards. Um, let's see here. The Kershaw Cinder is a hinderer. It's a hinderer design knife, but not, I mean, like, I think he's asking like true hinderers. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, me and Slicey, Monster Racing 38 said, yeah, Slicey and MC are the reason I now love Hinders. Um, yeah, we, we know we push them and we push them because we actually really like them. We legitimately like them. And, uh, I'm glad that Slicey decided, 
after handling some uh, some more, he was like, yeah, these are freaking awesome. I'm glad, you know, it's it's so wonderful to watch a new like, well, so let's see, it's not a new hinder or not. But when somebody initially gets turned on to hinder knives, it's wonderful to watch them go. Holy shit. I love this. This is so good. I can't believe I didn't pick one of these up a long time ago. Tristan Murphy says, can you middle finger flick your hinders? Yes, I can. Um, here's a Gen 6 Eclipse. Absolutely. You got to, it's, it, I mean, I know people tell me, they're like, how do you do that? It's so hard. You got to get exactly the right angle. You got to get your, the meat of your finger underneath that and kick it out this way. That's how you want to do it. Um, let's see here. Hinder versus Medford. Hinder. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, as far as the quality of a Medford knife goes, I will say their quality is good. Um, their, their quality is spot on. I have no issue with their quality whatsoever, as far as their knives go. And, uh, Medford's quality is is great, and they are definitely considered mid tech knives, which is why you have to pay more money for them. Uh, they are not high end production; they are partially handmade. Um, let's see here. Any suggestions on a knife under two hundred with titanium scales? Hmm. Um, knives under $200 with titanium scales. Your best bet is probably going to be Kaiser and Concept. Concept is going to be right on that $200 mark, but Kaiser probably is going to have the biggest selection of quality folders in titanium, but you're definitely, you're going to be looking at, at a Chinese made knife. Um, but yeah. Sean Bryan says, don't talk about middle finger flicking knives. I smashed my middle finger in a door last weekend and I did that for a long time. Hey, what a great reason to, um, you know, build up your, is it, is ambidexterity a word? Uh, you, you know, use your other, use your non-dominant hand or your dominant hand, depending on which finger you smashed. Uh, I'm having too much fun reading comments to end the live stream just yet. Can I show the sumo? Sure. Absolutely. Jake Hoback Sumo, um, a, an incredibly fidget friendly knife, low profile flipper tab, right? Got the button lock, absolutely, completely and totally drop shut. You have this little slot in there, you can do the reverse flick, right? And you have these beautifully shaped and positioned studs that you, or they're not really studs, they're kind of, they, they are the external stops, you can see how they meet here, right? But they're perfectly shaped for engagement right here just oh oh fidget factor supreme fidget factor supreme oh god it's so good the profile's wild it's very futuristic but this is so beautiful back here look at this how this all meets up oh god this is just excellent machine work it's so good and yeah i mean there is some there are some hand elements in that beautiful it's expensive, 550 bucks, just, you know, before people start going, you can buy a Glock for that. I know, I don't want a Glock. I'm not gonna <laughs> cut open my bricks of cheese with a Glock. But I'll damn well do it with a $500 knife. He is a nice guy, Floydian. Jake Hoback is super nice. I had a little chat with him after, um, uh, he, we talked about the, the sumo upload because it got a lot of attention and, uh, really nice. Actually, I have a, uh, a sliver coming from him. So that's cool. He's really nice. <laughs> First name, you could buy a house in Detroit. I don't know that that's factual, but it sure made me laugh. Uh, it was an uncomfortable amount of moaning. Oh boy. Have you watched a lot of my content? I do a lot of cringy moaning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can't build stuff with a gun. You can build stuff with a knife. That's actually a really sound argument coming from seems logical, which is super appropriate for all the stuff that he says. <laughs> it does. That's a that's a logical comment. Thank you. That is it's very correct. <laughs> uh, let's see here. My <laughs> my wife and mother in law are like, can you please not belch on camera like that? That I can't believe your audience is okay with that. And I'm like, I don't think you know. 
I don't think you know what type of people watch my live stream. Not one person in here gives the slightest crap if I decide to burp on camera. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say everybody in here is doing the same thing. It's just I'll, the only noise that's being made on the other end is burping and the clicking in and out of your knife. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, this has been a super fun live stream. Man, I love doing these regular knives and nonsense. This is This is what we started out with. This is just the... Just it's just a BS, a back and forth BS kind of question and answer. Just talk about whatever. These are the funnest live streams. I love doing these. I love the crazy stuff where I promote this and that, and then there's like 800 people in here. That's fun, but it's also chaotic. And I, you know, I kind of there's like a a task that has to be completed, and like certain things have to be done at certain times. And that's you know, I know people like to win stuff, and I'll do more stuff like that at some point. But I just love these live streams. They're so much fun. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys all stopped in tonight. Despite me changing the, uh, the day that I normally do this, we still had a lot of people in here, and that's, that's great. Um, but, yeah, I think it's about time to sign off, everybody. So uh, lots of uh, really fun content coming tomorrow. You guys are going to get an updated tour of the dungeon, which is my best attempt at a Halloween-themed upload. I walk through the entire dungeon and go over my current setup. So if anybody's got a YouTube channel and they're wondering about lighting and things like that, I do go over that. Um, but for everybody else, it'll just be general entertainment. Um, and then I have, of course, the um, unboxing of the Shaman Scales and the full assembly, uh, which should be entertaining for you guys. Uh, there's another episode of The Knife Guy on um, Sunday where I talk about my, my feelings and emotion, uh, emotions associated with finally getting my hands on the thing that I've always assumed would be perfect. And then on Sunday afternoon, I'm going to be talking about my top five most carried knives, again, because it has dramatically changed since two to three months ago. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining the live stream. Hope you guys have an excellent uh, rest of your Friday night an excellent Halloween weekend, and an excellent rest of your entire weekend. Bye.